and uh, what we're going to do right now is read uh, start reading chapter 6 okay Kerr Monastery Volcaran Isles mid realm page 41 okay of the first book in a seven series uh, fantasy uh, masterpiece uh, from the death gate cycle and book one is called dragon wing right from by margaret wise and tracy hickman okay kerr monastery volk volk volkaren Isles, mid realm. But you frowned. You seemed angry, I assumed. That I was feeling squeamish about butchering a small child. It is this privilege to die an innocent child and escape the evil to which mankind is heir. The words came to him from the past. It was this dark and chill room, the cracked stone walls that brought the memory back to him. Hugh, Hugh drove it down into the depths of his mind. Sorry, he'd recalled, recalled it. A worn, warming blaze burnt in the fire pit. He lifted a coal with the tongues and held it to the bowel of a pipe. The magus had produced from a pack lying on the floor stephen it seemed had thought of everything a few puffs and the stereo go stereo go uh, glowed and old memories faded and a footnote with with stereo go i'm going to read the footnotes as well by the way stereo go is a fungus found in the isle of titan humans of that land have long used crush stereoko as a healing balm elven explorers during the first expansion noticed that the slow burning pungent stereoko was far superior to their own pipe thorn plant and was less expensive to grow they transported it to their own plantations but there is a apparently something special about titan no other variety can match the original in flavor and aroma. Quote, the frown was for myself because I'd made a mistake. I'd misjudged something. The sort of mistake can be costly. I would be interested to know, however, what a kid that age could have done to learn to earn an early death. One might say he was born, answered Tryon, seemingly before he thought, because he cast Hugh a swift, furtive glance to see if he'd heard. There was a very little, there was, there was very little the assassin missed. Hugh paused, the hot coal held over the smoking bowl, and sta stared qu quizzically at the wizard tryon flushed you are being paid well enough not to ask questions he's he wrote re, retorted in fact here is your money fumbling fumbling in a purse that hung at his side he produced a handful of coins and counted out 5100 bar pieces i trust the king's marker will be sufficient try and held in out held it out hugh raising an eyebrow tossed the coal back into the fire only if i can collect on it puffing on the pipe to keep it lit the hand accepted the money and inspected it carefully the coins were genuine uh, all right a water bar barrel was tapped on the f on the front a likeliness though not a good one of stephen's head adorned the back in a realm where most things were obtained by either barter or stealing the king himself was a notorious pirate 
whose ravages uh, committed among the elven shipping had helped him win his throne. The double barrel coin is a, as it was called, was rarely seen, much less used. Its value was exchangeable in the precious commodity water. Water was scarce in the mid realm. Rain fell infrequently and when it did fall was immediately soaked up and retained by the porous coralite. No rivers or streams ran through the coralite isles. Various plant life growing there trapped water. The cultivation of crystal trees and cup, plant, uh, cup plants was an expensive labor laborious means of obtaining the precious liquid but it was the main source other than stealing from the elves of water for the human humans of the mid realm this job would make hugh hugh's fortune he would never have to work again if he chose and all for killing one little kid there's a footnote for number two referring to mid realm there is an abundance abundance of water in the lower realm those isles in the heart of a perpetual storm known as the male storm but no dragon has yet been found who will fly into the male storm the elves with their magical mechanical dragon ships are able to sail the storm tossed route and frequently hold a ver um, virtual monopoly on water the prices the elves charge when they they'll sell it to humans at all are exorbitant therefore the rating of elven transport ships and of water storage ports is not only financially lucrative for humans it is a matter of life or death it didn't make sense hugh balanced the coins in his hand and stood looking at the wizard very well i suppose you must know something try and admit it reluctantly you are of course familiar with the current situation between volcaran and eulandia no on a small table stood a pitcher a large bowl a mug tossing the money in the table the assassin lifted the water jug and poured its contents into the mug tasted it critically low realm stuff not bad water for drinking and washing you must at least appear to be a nobleman returned tryan irritably in in looks and smell and what do you mean you know nothing of politics casting off his cloak hugh learned a uh, leaned over the bowl and plunged his face into the water late leaving it over his shoulders he picked up a bar of lye soap and began to scrub his skin wincing slightly when the lather stung the raw flesh marks on his back you spent two days in your urini prison and see how you smell as for politics they have nothing to do with my business beyond providing the occasional customer or two i didn't even know for certain stephen had a son well he does the wizard's voice was cold and he also has a wife it is no secret that their marriage is strictly one of convenience to keep their two powerful nations from going for each other's throats and leaving us at the mercy of the elves the lady would like very much however to have power consolidated in her hands the crown of volcaran cannot be passed on to a female and the only way anne can take control is through her son we recently discovered her plot my king barely escaped with his life this time we fear he would not he he would not not annexed and so you get rid of the kid that solves your problem i guess but leaves your king without an heir pipe clamped firmly between his teeth hugh stripped off his pants 
and splashed water abundantly over his naked body. Tryon turned his back, either from, from modesty or perhaps sickened by the sight of numerous wells and battle scars, some flesh that marred the assassin's skin. Stephen is not a fool. The problem is being resolved. When we declare war upon Aristagon, the nations will unite, including the queen's own. During the war, Stephen will divorce Anne and marry a woman of Volcaren. Fortunately, his majesty is of an age that he can still father children, many children. The war will force the nations to remain united despite Anne's divorce. By the time peace comes, if ever, Yolandia will be too weakened to depend, too dependent on Stephen to break the ties. Very clever, Hugh conceded, tossing the towel aside. He drank two mugs of the cool, sweet-tasting, low round water, then relieved himself in a chamber pot in a corner. Refreshed, he began to look over the various articles of clothing that were folded neatly upon a cot. And what's, what'll make the elves go to war? They've got their own problems. I thought you knew nothing of politics, muttered Tryan cautiously. The cause of war will be the death of the prince. Ah, Hugh drew on the underclothing and the thick woolen hose all very neat and tidy that's why you must trust the deed to me rather than handle it yourself with a few magics in the castle yes tryan's voice broke on the word he nearly choked the hand paused in the act of drawing a shirt on over his head to give the magus a sharp glance the wizard kept his back turned however hugh's eyes narrowed laying the pipe aside he continued to dress himself but more slowly paying keen attention to every nuance of the wizard's words and tone the child's body must be found by our people in arestagon not a difficult task when the word goes forth that the prince has been taken captive by the elves there will be raiding parties sent to look for him I will provide you with a list of locations. We understand you have a dragon ship. Of Alvin make and design, isn't that convenient? He responded. You have this well thought out, didn't you? Even to the point of framing me for Lord Rogan's murder. Hugh pulled on a velvet doublet, black, braid, braided in gold. A sword lay on the bed. Picking it up, examining it critically, Hugh slid the blade into the sheath and tested it with a quick, deft flick of his wrist. Satisfied, he replaced the blade and buckled the sword belt around his waist. He slipped his dagger into the top of his boot. And not only framing me for murder, maybe committing the murder as well no tryon turned to face him the house wizard murdered his lord as you i gather have already guessed we were on the watch and merely took advantage of the situation your dagger was appropriate and substituted for the one in the body the word was whispered to that night friend of yours to the effect that you were in the neighborhood you let me lay my head on the blood slimmed stone let me see that maniac standing above me with his dull sword and then you save my life and think that fear alone will buy me it would have not it would it would have another man with you i had my doubts and as you may have gathered i had already expressed them to stephen so I take the kid to Aristagon, murder him, leave the body for the grieving father to find, who then shakes his fist and vows vengeance on the elves, and all humankind marches off to war. 
won't it occur to someone that the elves aren't really that stupid they don't need war with us right now this rebellion of theirs is serious business you seem to know more about the elves than you do your own people some might find that interesting some might who don't know what i have to what i have to have my ship overhauled by elven shipbuilders and that its magic must be renewed by elven wizards so you trade with the enemy he shrugged in my business everyone's an enemy tryon licked his lips the discussion was obviously leaving a bitter taste in his mouth but that's what happens thought hugh when you drink with kings the elves have been known to capture humans and taunt us by leaving the bodies where they may easily be discovered tryon said in a low voice you should arrange matters so that it appears i know how to arrange matters hugh placed his hand on the wizard's shoulder and had the satisfaction of feeling the young man flinch i know my business reaching down he picked up the coins steadied them again then dropped two into a small inner pocket of the doublet the remainder he tucked away carefully into his money pouch and stored that in a pack speaking of business how will i contact you for the rest of my pay and what what assurances do i have that i'll find it and not a feather shaft feathered shaft in my ribs when i return you have you have our word the word of a king as for the feather shaft now it was tryon tryon who experienced satisfaction i assume you can take care of yourself i can said hugh remember that a threat tryon sneered a promise and now said the hand cooling we'd best get going we'll need to do our traveling by night the dragon will take you to your ship ship is moved and then return and tell you the location hugh raised an eyebrow no you have our word hugh smiled the word of a man who hires me to murder his child the young wizard flushed in anger do not judge me you cannot understand biting his tongue he silenced himself understand what you flashed him a sharp narrow-eyed glance nothing you said yourself you have no interest in politics tryon swallowed believe what you want of us it makes little difference hugh eyed him speculatively decided that no more information would be forthcoming tell me where you are and i will find my way from there impossible this fortress is secret we worked many years to make it a safe retreat for his majesty ah but you have my word hugh mocked it seems we're at an impasse tryon flushed again his teeth clenched over his lips so tightly that when at when at last he spoke hugh could see white marks upon his flesh upon the flesh what of this you provide me with a general location say the name of an isle i'll instruct the dragon to take you and the prince to a town on that isle and leave you that's the best i can do hugh considered this then nodded in agreement knocking the ashes from the pipe he tucked tucked the long curved stem with a small rounded bowl into the pack and inspected the remainder of the pack's contents he eventually approved what he saw for he sin cinched it tightly cinched it tightly the prince carries his own food and clothing enough for tryon faltered but forced the words out for a uh, a month it shouldn't take that long said the hand easily throwing the fur cloak over his shoulders depending on how close this town is to where we're bound i can hire dragons the prince must must not be seen there are few who know him outside of the court 
but if by chance they were recognized relax i know what i'm doing hugh said softly but there was a warning in the black eyes that the wizard thought best to heed hugh heft the pack and a, and started for the door movement glimpsed from the corner of an eye drew his attention outside in the courtyard he saw the king's executioners bow in apparent response to some unheard command and then quit his post the block alone remained standing in the courtyard it gleamed with a white light strangely inviting in its coldness and purity and promise of escape the hand paused it was as if he felt for a brief instant the invisible filament cast out by fate wrap itself around his neck it was tugging him away dragging him on entangling him in the same vast web in which Tryon and the king were already struggling.